Hello? Hello, hello? Can you hear me? No? Okay. No? No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, super. I don't think this thing is working. Hello? 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 Okay, good. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, do you know what, what's your emotional age? How old are you, emotionally speaking? Yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> exactly. You know, this is, this is a thing, actually. Uh, there's a lot of research invest on this. Uh, huge companies, they develop tests to make the candidate take it for a job that it's based on this. They want to find out what is your emotional age because the emotional age does not follow the biological age. So you might be 50, but your emotional age might be 10, or you might be 15 and your emotional age is 40. So they don't go uh, together for the most part. And then they found out that the biggest CEOs of, of the countries, the most successful people, they are not actually smart but they are they have emotional intelligence they emo they are emotionally intelligent which means that they know how to deal with his own emotion and that's what is all about when you say that a person is actually intelligent emotionally speak is because they know how to deal with their emotion so our goal here tonight is for us to be become more aware of what is our age that how are we dealing with our own emotions? So let's go for child behaviors, okay? Let's go with that. What is the most common child behavior that, if you guys find any other behaviors, you're welcome to speak. But um, usually uh, kids scream, they cry, they isolate themselves, isolate yourself, they sulk. Yeah. Does anybody else has any? Anything to add to a normal, I mean, child behavior? Now, every aggressiveness, yes, that comes here together with the scream, yes, that is a behavior too. What else? What do you think? Revolt, yes, that too, that goes in here. What? Now I have a question. And this question, you have to be honest with yourself and you don't have to answer me you just have to answer yourself okay do we do this yeah right so it's just for us to think so that will bring us you know that this is child behavior and this is normal for a child now when you see a child screaming for an example what do we do? We just say, oh, it's, it's a child, right? It's normal. But when the adult does it, it gives us the, the wrong impression. So the science behind this will tell us that he might be 50 years old, but if your emotion takes over you, you become your emotionally age. So why is that important for us to, to remember this and, and, and study this? Because that doesn't only help happens to you, but happens to other people too. So uh, if, you, if a person is angry, at the moment that she becomes angry, she's going to act like her emotional age. So you might be dealing with a two-year-old. Write that. So be careful. 
in what you're going to say and how you're going to act because you are literally li dealing with a three-year-old in that particular moment. And it's important for us to be aware of this so we can maybe expand this a little bit. Okay, no one does this in purpose. This is how they learn how to deal with this. Another thing, when you evaluate your emotional age, you cannot evaluate your emotional age based on your knowledge. That doesn't work. So you can say, I am a psychiatrist, I am a psychologist, I know everything about emotion, I did the coach train, I, 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 it doesn't matter. Because when, when you're going to answer this, you're going to have to remember the last time that you were under the influence of an emotion. It's not what you know about ang anger. It's how you're dealing with the anger when that happens to you. This is how you evaluate. Not after, not trying to justify, not trying to put the, your knowledge in place. Because that, it won't work. So let me do this with you. Have you ever seen a person, okay, that, for an example, this person, you can tell that this person is racist, okay? But when that person is speaking, no, I'm not racist. No. Who, me? Racist? No. Not at all. I have friends. I do this. Can you tell that that person is, is racist? Yes, you can. What are they doing? They, they, they don't have self-knowledge, so they are not aware of who they really are. Have you ever spoke to someone that is very um, tight with money, that doesn't like to spend money, right? Huh? It's stingy, yes, right? Have you ever seen a person that is actually stingy that, that said, I, I'm in this? No. They usually give all the kind of excuse, even though that you see that they are. You see that they are attached to money and materialism. You can say, but they, but they say, who, me? No, I'm super okay. I just don't like, you know, I'm not going to throw my money uh, on the street. But uh, I'm not like this. I'm this. And you look at the person like what? Right? You don't say anything, but you know. Is that right? Everybody agree with me? Same thing happens, guys, when we are talking to people that can see who we are. Same thing happens. The same way that you can tell what the person is giving, and you can tell that she's nothing like this, the same thing happened to you, and you don't realize. You're talking to a person, the person is looking to me and said, who? Me, uh, listen, I already forgave. I, I mean, I have this person that did this to me. You can tell on the sound, the s how they sound. You can tell in how they speak. You can tell that they did not forgive, but they keep saying to you, they're selling them that, no, I forgave. I forgave. No, I have nothing against that person anymore. I'm this and I'm that. Okay? I want you to become aware that when you're doing this to your friends, they also can see you. Okay? You are only BS yourself. Because other people can tell better than you of what's going on. And you're there selling your image. You know, I'm this, and I'm that, and I'm this, and I'm that, and the other person go. Right. Yeah. Not buying. People don't buy that. Okay? Because uh, people, if they're close enough with you, they're going to see who you really are. So when it's important for us to be aware that we live as if we had like a blindfold in our eyes when it comes to us. We can see others very well. But when it comes to see us, we need some type of effort. 
It's not going to come that easy. It will be difficult, actually, to see and look at you and find out, for an example, your emotional age. Okay? So this is, this is uh, a journey. So when you evaluate, I want you to think that let's, let's focus on these three emotions because, you know, emotions are not always bad. It's, it's not a bad thing. Emotion is a good thing. When you have joy, it's the most delicious thing ever. You know, when you're happy, it's, uh, there are also emotions. But when you're sad, when you're angry, and all this, uh, or when you have fear, it's not the best thing uh, in the world. But it's, it's a matter of us learning uh, how to deal with that. So I want you to try to remember the last time that you were angry. Try to remember. Last time you were angry. Okay? See if you can remember that. You don't have to say it. Uh, and this is a type of a, of a feeling that is not always easy for you to recognize. Because when you're angry, some people would outburst and others will happen only here. So I, in other words, I can be very angry, very angry, but you won't notice a thing. So that's why the only person that can evaluate is yourself. Okay? So all, the, I, this one is a big one. People live in fear almost 24 hours a day, but they, you have fear. No, fear? You think so? No. Who me? Oh, my God. I went there and I was, you know, paragliding, you know. I'm not afraid of anything, you know. And one way to detect the fear is actually when you try to prove it otherwise. That means that you had the feeling and then you try to overcome. And we're not talking about how you're going to overcome fear. We're talking about the fear itself. What is the time that you actually say to yourself, you take a deep breath and Oh my God, I'm scared. I'm in fear. Fear mode. Okay? And another one is sadness. When was the last time that you were sad? And how did you react to the sadness? Okay? Now, let's go to make some connections with child behavior. Okay? Let's make some connection with child behavior. Let's go for um, screaming and rage. Like when you scream, when you shout at someone, okay, it's usually the most common response to anger. That is thought basically when the kids is like two to three years old. Who heard about the the Terrible two, right? The the, 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 the what happens when, te when the terrible two happens? That kids that used to do everything that you wanted, they started to say, no, 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 no. I want to do my way. And, uh, and then when they don't get their way, what do they do? They scream. But why did they scream? Because they were able to to manifest anger. That's why the kid screams. It's because the kid is angry. And that type of emotion starts when you are two or three years old. So you're capable of feeling angry when you're two to three years old. So what happens? Imagine a two-year-old, two to three-year-old, feeling that rage inside, we still feel it sometimes, so we know what it's like. They don't know what to do with this. They have no other tools to do with this. So what do they do? They scream. And they go, ah, bah, bah, bah. Yeah, then they start, they, they start to, uh, and then after a few minutes, it will pass. 
And this is very common with a person that is screaming with rage. Five minutes later, they're all good. But poor the people that heard the scream. And the thing is that the person that scream, like they take the energy and leave it, all that, and they say, what? What did I do? What? What, what, I, what, what, what happened? Nah? Because they cannot see, right, the problem with, with shouting, with screaming. And I'm going to tell you another thing. People pay a lot of money today to be able to scream because some people, they don't scream at all. And then they accumulate all the anger inside of them. And it builds up and builds up and builds up and builds up because they don't scream. Then they pay $1,000 to go on a weekend on don't know what this coach thing. And what do they do there? They say, scream. So the person go there and they start to scream and they go, ah. And they go, oh, I feel so much better. Woo, that was wonderful. Right? Because... Um, one of the normal, easiest manifestation of anger, it's a screaming. Okay? But it's very important that you understand this. When, when you scream the first time, and then you scream the second time when you were two to three uh, years old, you learn, you learn that that works for you. You get the results. So people that shout when they are 50, 40, 30, 60, they know that when they shout, they also, people pay attention to that. Okay? So they don't do it just because it's, it's the anger. They get, they get something back from it. When you're a teenager and you, when you scream up to your mom or to your parents, you can say that they, they sometimes do this. No, and everybody was, you know, uh, some people are afraid of you when you scream. And you scream to your children, the children become afraid of you. And you know that that works. So that is very hard for a person that is so used to screaming to stop screaming. Because they get the results that they wanted. And they think that this is the only thing that they have available to them. Let's go back to a two-year-old. When that two-year-old is screaming on the floor, most of us parents, or most of our parents, had no idea on how to deal with that. So what did they go? Don't scream. Don't scream. I'm going to take you over here. I'm going to put you down. And d stop doing this and this, this, this. And then sometimes we scream for them to uh, stop screaming. And that's it. And then that's how what happened to us. And then, what, uh, what do we know? We don't learn at a young age. There was other ways to learn to deal with that anger. Imagine if you were two to three years old, and you do this, you have a burst of anger, and then right after your mom or your dad comes and talks to you, listen, I know how it feels. I know that emotion. I know what it does to your body. Describe it to mommy. What what did that feel like? You know, it's something that that comes over here and does this and this. You know what? There's other ways to deal with that. Maybe we can uh, talk about it and see what brought you here, or maybe we can take deep breaths. You know, why you doing it wh when that happens, or maybe we so we were not given that. So we don't know any better. So when I'm angry, I scream like a two-year-old, or three, or four, or five, or six. And I actually become in that stage, try to talk to a person that is angry. Huh? And more than you talk to them, but don't do that. They scream even more, and more, and more. So when, when you are dealing with somebody that screams all the time when they are in rage, what am I dealing with? Five-year-old, four-year-old. I have to know this, okay? And I have to know that the time when I do this, this is what I'm becoming. 
Because I'm really angry. I'm going to act like a three-year-old, a four-year-old, a five-year-old. That's, wha that's literally what's, what's going to happen. Okay? So another one is sadness and crying. Crying is one of the normal expression of sadness. Let's go back to a five, six, seven-year-old. When she has something uh, and you take it away from her, or when you do something, when you say to that five, six, seven-year-old, oh, you did this, no, and then you hear the crying, and the crying comes out with tears and tears and tears. Because when you are sad, one of the normal way to express the sadness is through crying. Okay? Now, you could be a CEO of Google, and then you have a uh, fight with your, with your husband. Next thing you're doing, you're going inside of the bathroom, you're throwing doors, right? Even though that you're so mature, you're not really mature. When the emotion takes over, you're, you're not that old anymore. And crying is the same thing. Have you ever met someone that you cannot talk to the person without them crying? I used to have somebody that used to work with me that I used to say to her, I need to talk to you. So when I sit down and say, listen, and start crying, I say, why are, you, why are you crying? Oh, my God, I don't know what you're going to say. I don't know. I say, no, take it easy. Th there's some people that they cry with the minimum emotions of sadness. They, they start crying and crying and crying because that's, that's a child behave. And it happens. Now, I'm not saying that you should never cry. That's different. We do cry. But when you cry every single time for everything, something is wrong. Okay? If no one can talk to you, if no one can say anything to you and you start crying, there is also a gain behind the crying. Because when you start crying, people go, oh, don't do, don't cry. Don't do this. You know, there is another thing that happens to, that it's very common child behave, child behave, it's the I don't know. Anything that you ask an adult and they say, I don't know. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. They use the I don't know as a child behave. Because when you are a child, at the moment that you say, I don't know, and then the person goes, say, well, I know for you. Let me, and they take over the problem and the solution. And you as a child, you understand that you're saying, I, it's, it's people that we cannot ask anything. That if you ask, how you feel? Oh, I don't know. The I don't know comes automatically. This is a sign. And, and, and you ask a person, they will cry. Why are you crying? I don't know. Why are you angry? I don't know. Why do this? I don't know. The I don't know is when somebody else jump in to solve them the, the whatever it is that you're going through. So you get used to it. So it's a lot of things that we learn when we were uh, kids that we're still stuck on those type of behavior without any awareness whatsoever. And you don't want to live that, do you? Like that? I hope not, right? Another thing is fear and isolation. They're very common. What do you do when, when you are afraid as a kid? You go to run to the closet. Sometimes you go under the bed. Isn't it natural for a kid to do? Because they don't know how to deal with fear. So at the moment that the fear comes as a child, you try to feel protected, so you hide. It's a uh, uh, fight and flight, very common re uh, reaction to fear. And lots of the time we isolate ourselves because we are in fear. Now, this fear doesn't have to be a, a fear of your life or fear of a monster any longer <coughs> or fear of a parent fighting. 
it's very common to parent a fire when you see where is the kid they run to the closet they run under the bed they do that because they are in fear uh, with that situation so what do we do when we are in fear and sometimes we are unconscious we isolate we run we hide it could be a fear of other people's opinion yeah when you were so concerned with other people think about you, you were in fear all the time. You might isolate yourself, okay? Or you were afraid of failure. It could be many feelings that you are afraid of, and you're so terrified about that. You have no idea how to deal with that fear. You isolate yourself, okay? It's funny, right? Because sometimes you say that when you are in fear, you want to be uh, near people. Not really. Not really. When you are in fear, the first response you have automatically is isolation. Kay? And the person lives in isolation, but they don't know why. They don't know that what's making them go through this is a fear of something, okay? And it could be a lot of things. So that's why we have to be uh, aware of ourselves. In Brazil, I'm gonna tell you this. In Brazil, when we were young, everybody went through this, if you were Brazilian. When we were young, I don't know if that happens here in America, we used to play with balls all the times. It could be soccer, it could be volleyball, but uh, every time we want to play in the street, someone had the ball, and then they bring the ball, and, and then we play, right? Everybody says, and then that kid that owns the ball, when they become angry, they take the ball <laughs> and say, this is my ball, <laughs> and they leave. <laughs> and everybody will play it in the street, and everybody, what? No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody used to be so upset with the kid that owns the ball and because they are angry. Now, why we become angry is the first thing we have to reflect upon. Why are we angry? Most of the time we're angry because things does not go our way. Just like the kid, acting like kids, just like the kid that owns the ball. Why he stops the game and bring the ball home and leave everybody without playing? So if I'm not playing, no one else is playing. I'm taking the ball uh, with me. Now, how can we imitate that same behavior on our dates here? Let's go for the center for an example. Now, your dad doing a job at the center. But something didn't go your way. It does not always go your way. So what do you do? I'm leaving. I'm leaving. And not only that, I am going to contact everyone. Because then I'm going to say, you know what happened to me? You're not going to believe it. I'm not going to work on that uh, type of thing anymore because this happened to me and they did it because if I don't play, no one else will play. Exactly the same behavior. Exactly the same behavior. Try a uh, sulk for an example. In Portuguese we say, emburrada, pirraça, right? A kid does that all the time. Say hello. No. Hey, what I know. This is not. What is that? And we do the same thing. Because one of, of, of the type of uh, child's behavior that is very normal, it's payback also. Okay? You didn't do this, so I'm going to do this to you. And that it comes. And sometimes that's what we do. We want to punish people. Just like a kid. 
you know, that sometimes you're in second grade and third grade and that particular person did something and it got everybody and put them against that other person. Saying, if you look at it, the child's behavior, you live in a community, you see child's behavior all the time. Why? Because we might have all the knowledge when that emotion takes over a body, we become somebody else. And we are capable of the child's thing we can ever think of it. Okay? So the biggest thing comes in maturity and immaturity. How mature are you? That's the biggest question. Now, how mature are you when you are involved with emotion? How mature are you when you are angry? It's a question. How old are you when you're angry? How old are you when you're sad? How old are you when you're in fear? Only you can tell. Okay? So we're going to say that we might sound so mature, but when it comes to emotion, we are immature. What this means? I'm capable of acting like a child. Now, if I'm aware of this, I can change things. But if I have no awareness, I'm going to continue with that as a cycle, as a behavior. Okay? So, and the worst thing is this, is that all this personality that we build as a kid, everything that we went through, it was unconscious. We didn't build this personality that we use. Who build this personality? Your teacher, your mother, your father, your environment. You build this on a process completely unconsciousness. It's unconscious. I don't know about you, but who wants to leave this personality that I created 100% unconsciously? Seriously, who wants to, to live with that? That's what I'm going to talk. Excellent questions. We do. We do. We do. But not with the mindset that we are. Because if you're going to talk to a psychologist, to a psychiatrist, I am one. I study psychoanalysis. See, I know. I know. What are we doing when a person comes to seek profession, professional help? They want to fix this personality. They want to say, let's, let's fix it. That's what we do. And I started to question that. You say, are there really any fixing to this personality? Because everybody that keeps saying, Oh, I changed so much. You look at them and say, really? You change it when you're not under the influence of any emotion. That you can say, yeah, it's an excellent, but changed so much. But when she becomes angry, or when he becomes angry, he acts exactly like the person before, exactly like the past. And we are under the illusion. No, I, I change it so much. And that's what we came. What is the difference between changing and transformation? Hmm? Changing is something that you upgrade. You know? Transformation, you let go. And you become something else. No, an upgrade is different than transformation. Right? You are an upgrade. I'm a better person. But if you are a transformed person, you don't see 
anything that is what you used to be anymore. You transform. The goal of the spirituality is to transform. It's not to change. It's to transform. That's our goal. Every single one of us that are here can. You go back, you go back to become a child. Ups and downs, and, and they change, it changes. That's why it's called change, because it changes. It, the, tr the transformation, you let go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's transformation, and we're looking for that. We're looking for transformation, right? But then we are attached to this personality that we create unconsciousness, and yes, are we ready to create a consciousness personality? If you can rebuild yourself, what it, what it would be like? Tell me. Mm, tell me. Tell me what this new personality will be like. Tell me. If you can rebuild yourself, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you feel like doing? Because, listen, there is a problem between psychologic and psychiatrists because they don't see the soul. When you go to a psychology, they're going to treat you as a personality. When you go to a spirituality, you find out that you are who? Divine. Right? Every spirituality that you go, what do they say? No, there is something else behind the personality. You are divine. You have a life itself that is divine. Right? What do they say on spiritism? They say you have the, um, what, is it, what do they say in the spirit book? The, um, uh, uh, the seed of the The seed of divinity within you, right? So every spirituality, and, and, and even if a Christian, when God said, I build humankind as me, they look like me, they're I me. So every, if you look at it, the teaching is that you are a divine being. You are a cosmic being. What is that that is making your heart beat? What is that that it makes it everything work so well inside of you that you don't even notice? You have no idea what, what's going on in all this universe. It's happening inside of you. That's got to be divine. That's got to be something much bigger than this personality here that it's so attached to this is good, this is bad, this is right, this is wrong, this is this, this is that, I'm angry, I'm this, I'm that. You are too, we're too busy with the personality. Something else is running us. Something else is running us. What is it? Is that who I really am? Am I missing something? Now, with that, I will need a personality. Because in this world, I'm going to need a personality. I'm going to need a personality every single day. But it doesn't have to be the same personality. You can create one for you to deal with that particular person, the particular situation. I'm usually very, um, I'm unsure of myself. Okay, but I have a really important meeting. Am I gonna go with this unsure, or I'm gonna create a personality, that, a personality that knows what they're talking about? We can do that because this was created on consciousness, and everybody's making you believe that you are this personality. You are the name. You are the school where you come from. You are all the pain. You are every thought that you are, and you believe in that. And th that's why you don't even see other possibilities. You're not open to transcend, to live a different life, to re reinvent yourself, because your belief system is stuck on a personality. And then you can say, can you create it? 
yes, you can. Try it. I done it. Try it. And choose one particular difficult thing in your life and say, I am not going to be an artist in this particular life like I usually do. I'm going to build this person. I, I'm going to be. And you imagine, you create, you say to yourself that you can do that, and you can. You really can. Because wha- the problem is not the personality, because we need it. The problem is that the identification with the personality, that's a problem. Personality is not a problem. As long as I'm not attached to that, I'm okay. As long as I'm flexible. Because what I really know is that it's kind of like a theater that I'm playing a part on that some some situation. It's like a theater. I can, I'm sorry, I cannot find other examples. But it's basically that. Right? How many times you had people bought it? Hmm? Right? It's simple. Because you're not, you're only playing a game. You, 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 it's not the real you. The real you, it's all love. It's all compassion. It's all fraternity. It's all charity. This is who you really are. And uh, we don't have to be here anymore. So the only reason we are two years old, emotionally speaking, is because we believe so badly that we are that personality. If we detach ourselves a little bit and invest time on reinventing yourself, recreating yourself, it will be a much better way to spend your life. Instead of trying to fix the old one, you can't fix that because it's not real. You can't fix what is not real. But you can build somebody just the way you want. And every time you need a personality, is out there. But we, when you don't need it, you are divine. You are one with everybody. You are this wonderful feeling of joy. Yes. Yes, I've I seen a lot of this connected to your inner child. It's good to go back there and connect it to them, but it's not real. It's not who you are. That's why I want you to understand. It's only a personality. We use that language all the time because that's what we are taught to think, that we are the personality. Now, when you go to other cultures, that they know that the you use personality, it's not really you, you are divine, you don't see this type of behavior. But this is how we deal with the problem, which it helps, improves, it changes a little bit, but it doesn't transform. And we are looking for transformation. Don't we? So my whole thing is write it down. Exactly the type of personality. Because I start building that, but do it consciously. Do it consciously. No more of this. Because acting with this personality that we created when we were two to three years old, it's tough. It's really tough. And we can live so much better. We can have a completely 
give their life. We can open ourselves to new possibilities. There is a way more for us to experience in life. Okay, thank you. Oh, if you want to say something, go ahead. It's kind of like, if you think about it, it's kind of like a building the personality to become there. Because personality, are you can build. That's why you're not, you can co-create personality. Yes. That's what Paul did. He even changed his name. A lot of people who go under this, they change it because the transformation is so big. I'm not so anymore. I can be called that. I cannot be called that person that used to kill Christians, used to do all that. So I drop and I create a new one. I'm now Paul. It's that simple. There is no need because this personality that we create in consciousness is full of anger and sadness and fear. It's normal. It's not our fault. You know, we chose, we picked that personality. We built that personality when we were so young, we had no idea what we would do. And this is every single one of us. Every single one of us lived that personality that was created unconscious when we were two, three, four, five, six years old. Every single one of us. You might think that you're better, you're not. Because it was created unconsciousness, it cannot be better. But all the investment that you see, if all the investment that you invest on trying to fix the past, if you invest that on the future and what you wanted to become, you will see a lot more results. Then try to fix what's broken, try to fix what is not even real. Okay, thank you so much.